I think the one is it's uh, the it's December third in the planning board Baltimore planning board meeting, and I believe the first matter before us is Kevin and Sylvia Rodden regarding a conditional use permit. Would you like to approach and. hearing on this, so please go ahead when you're ready. Okay, um, what we're here for is basically uh, we've already established a uh, permit for the, uh, for the record. Oh, uh, my name is Dan, I'm going to be the general contractor on the job. Okay. And uh, this I'm is Sylvia Rodden, Kevin Stroudland. And what we're here for, we've already established that we've got the building permit. We're looking to get a conditional use permit for a uh, uh, apartment that's going to be installed in the lower half of this building. Um, the reason for the apartment is uh, at some point either Sylvia's mother, uh, she's getting older, she may be using the apartment, or the brother who has uh, come with some hard times and stuff like that, he may be tended by using the building. Otherwise than that, they don't plan on having you know, anybody, other, anybody else uh, using this. Uh, we've met all the qualifications of the, with Tom as far as the uh, size of what the unit can be. And everything that has to be done, so we've gone over everything with him. And so I'm just, I'm just here to see how we can get this thing through. Okay, great. Thank you, Tom. Any comments? Just um, backing up what Dan said, I went through um, pretty great detail with Kevin, and he submitted all the answers to the accessory dwelling units required in the zoning ordinance. And um, it, I think in very great detail, I, I don't really have any issue that I don't think there's a, a problem there. Okay. Any members of the board like to comment on the application? No? Okay, all right. Are any members of the public like to comment on the application? Okay. So, um, that would be appropriate for someone to make a motion to approve it. You should open the public hearing. What's that? You should open the public hearing. At the open the public hearing. Okay, so I thought I'd done that, but. Uh, so I'm going to open a public hearing. Is there any members of the public that would like to comment on the proposal? All right. <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think at this point it might be appropriate to entertain a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. All right. Was there a second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. That's it. Yes, I have the building permit. The rest have been there. I'll, I'll process it and let you guys know. Okay. Right. Check. Yeah. Right. Check. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Great. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Today, um, we have to have 
As assuming that we just have one public hearing and there's no reason to, you know, assuming we only have one public hearing, we have to notice it by January 1st and we have to have it by January 13th. Okay. And when do we need to propose, we have to notice it and then when do these proposed amendments have to be uh, we should, submitted for the public? It, 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 the, uh, we should have final language to present for that public hearing so that people know exactly what the proposed changes will be. Okay. And you said January. So we have this meeting and then we'll get to the January meeting. That's it between now and then. So, so you can have the... So my suggestion would be to have the public hearing attached to the January meeting, but that would still require another meeting to say that, yes, we agree about the following potential revisions and the language about them, or we can use the January meeting in that way and have another meeting shortly after the January meeting to say, um, to, to have the public hearing. Okay. Um, do you have any thoughts on proposed amendments? I asked Tom to think about that. Um, yeah. One of the other ones that we did come up with that we forgot to mention last week, uh, last month, is uh, junkyards. We don't have anything in the ordinance to regulate them, and Cal and I have been in contact with Regal and uh, Concord, and they recommended rather than have a standalone ordinance, have it as a section in the zoning ordinance. So that's going to be a brand new section that will, that will come in for you. Okay. We also don't. We also have to um, define poor chop lots. Yes. yes. There was there was a number of. Yeah. Yes. We and reviewed um, at the last meeting. We, we mentioned some. So yes, define poor chop lots right. is definitely. And I think Michelle sent some stuff that we were. She did. Look at, yeah. So I'll work with Tom, and um, we need to make sure we get all of our topics agreed upon, and then Tom and I can work on um, sending you all language for consideration. Does language have to go before legal or anything like that if we're proposing something? It depends how, oh, what requires a building permit. Right. Um, um, it depends on what it is we're revising, but the short answer is no, I don't think so. Um, the zoning ordinance dictates what the town requires one get a building permit for. And it is um, burdensome, I would say, to property owners. It's more comprehensive than um, most other towns are. So um, Tom and I are looking over that, and I've asked Tom to come up with more concise language that eliminates painting, for example. But the um, language out that we could borrow from other or is there standards out there as far as the verbiage? Um, it's industry standards pertaining to kind these of, subjects. Generally speaking, yes, but sometimes with like Ron's we get to a little more specifics. Um, but we can use you know other ordinances as examples. But there's not really is that really a boilerplate thing? We'd have, we'd have to tailor it to the specifics yes. of our town. Yeah. Right, that's what it's all about. Right, we can look at lots of examples, but there is no one yeah. guiding light. But if we're using verbiage that's out there, chances are it's yes. compliant. It won't, yes. Well, right, it's just, it's yeah. more about um, why would we require a permit or not require a permit for X? It's more of those kinds of, you know... As far as the, instead of just language. Like just right, language. like that's the heavier lift, is to think about, you know... The topics that we need to address. Right, because for some reasons you want them to make sure that these things meet code for safety, but then um, there's also fees, you know. Do, do we want them for no other reason than for fees? Um, but the other thing is that building permits inform assessing. That it, if you replace your roof, then your, your house now has a new roof, and that would affect in some way, even if only slightly, the value of the home. So, you know, but at the same time, not to be burdensome to property owners, that every time they lose their room, they would need a building permit. And we've had on some good topics in our past meetings that it's got to be like minutes wise that we've had some good conversations about some of the things we want to modify. This time of year, um, I remember the pork chop laws that was specifically yeah. wanted to do building permits. 
So if any of you, those are, those are the three. Um, we need to update the applications. That's, that's a, yes. But I, I don't. We need to figure out whether that means what level of approval we need to get to update those. That's a really good. I'm not sure what you mean. So our applications, like. Conditional use permit application form. Yeah, forms. like all the ZBA forms, the forms for this, oh, like oh, they have oh, like oh. different requirements, and, like outdated requirements, but. Um, and make sure we're consistent across applications. Yeah. But the I mean, that, that should be pretty much an administrative task, right? I would think so, uh, except when they may not, um, when, when you may have a conflict. Like well, I, so I approached Charlie Putnam, who's the chair of the ZBA, about updating them because there's inconsistencies. And he said, he, he was like not willing to just have it be administrative. Well, so it's, it's the correcting of inconsistencies. So how many of butters? You know, if you're going to change how many of butters, that, that would be yeah. in an ordinance. Um, right. But right now that kind so, um, if you want to remind me about... Um, I have the list of all of the inconsistencies through all of the... So then Tom and I can evaluate which ones are a zoning ordinance sure. change and which ones can be just administrative. Because okay. sure. Charlie basically was like, you know, if, if we're going to go by the state, the state changes standards and the forms are just outdated, but he didn't want to necessarily change them without... You know, maybe there was a reason we kept them that way or whatever, but I mean, I think chances are it was likely just yeah. nobody did it. Yeah. Nobody paid attention. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, let's, if we, if we can get those, <coughs> then. Yep. We'll uh, do that. Um, who has those for now? Carolyn and I have them collectively together, but I probably have the most comprehensive because I end up sending them out to the applicants. As Are they requested. available to like, us anytime? Yeah. On you want to put a folder on the drive on the of, of applications and share it? Sure. Are they? Okay. They're on the website, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> 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 you know what the thing is, like, it, it's not that it's not that we're trying to like have them not be available to people. It's just a matter of finding the person who's going to actually down, upload them and do all that. Well, and it's also having something on the website that we're acknowledging is out of date that we want to revise, yeah. and we're always on the cusp of revising it, and it never happens. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of the ZBA forms I've redone because they were literally typed, and you had to come in and get a copy because somebody did them with a typewriter. Uh -huh. And, you, you know, I tried to scan them, and they, that doesn't scan yeah, yeah, yeah. well. So, um, it's just a matter of, like, manpower, which we're short on. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just on the list. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, Kevin and the rest of you, if there are other things that you remember us talking about and, and that you remember as part of a certain case that we discussed that you, you know, or you otherwise have ideas about things that should be, could be better that we ought to look into. Yeah, I'll go yeah. back and look at, um, at minutes, yeah, past sure. meetings, yeah. to uh, refresh. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> So we don't have to list the specific ideas at this meeting, we just need them, we can actually bring them up at the next meeting. Um, so, so the, you know, if we have 18 ideas, we're, we're going to have a problem because um, highly like, unlikely that we're going to have 18 more articles for zoning revision. Sure. So we're going to have to focus it to the most important um, practical ones. So I would say, you know, at least junkyard and building permit, um, and, and maybe even pork chop lots. We can, we'll see what comes up with the other revisions. But we'll see what we. Oh, um, excuse me. I just the pork chop lot thing. Though, that's in the subdivision ranks, not in the zoning ordinance. I thought you said. I thought it was. Oh. Um, I thought the issue was it wasn't defined. Well, it isn't defined. It is, but where is it, it not is, defined? It's prohibited in the subdivision ranks. You cannot have pork chop lots. But it's not defined anywhere. It's not defined in the subdivision regs, site review, zoning. It's just not defined. I thought it was also in the zoning that I'm, we shall not have. I'm pretty sure we had this conversation every time we brought it up. 
then it's in the subdivision range. And I really thought you said, all right, all right, all right. Well, um, I'm pretty sure. So would that be? But anyway, if that's the case, then this, this board This board can you, just define it at yeah, any time, and it's yeah, not yeah, tied to March. It doesn't have to be the zoning ordinance at all. It doesn't. Doesn't well, the no. porch have lots. If the port, you know, if um, only the zoning ordinance has to go to town meeting. If we want to revise subdivision or site plan regs, then this body can do that at any time of the year. Okay. I didn't, okay. Uh, going back to my question, and I think you uh, didn't quite answer. Didn't quite answer it, it <laughs> because you. So again, I'm going to repeat the question, which is: Sorry. When is the deadline for ideas? Well, okay, so so thank you for that. It, it, it depends on, is the January meeting going to be the public hearing date and we're going to meet in the meantime? Or is the January date going to be the date where we're going to suss it all this out or we're going to have all our language proposals and we're going to decide what we're finalizing and then we're going to have a public hearing after that? So I think with the holidays, the latter is, makes more sense. I don't see us having a meeting between now and the January meeting being the holidays. Okay, so then I would say if you would add to the agenda ideas for for January, then we will go through all the language revision proposals and we'll get you language ahead of time so that everybody's prepared to say what they think about things. According to the notices that I did last year for this, we sussed out ideas in January and had the hearing in February. Time wise that works, yes. Yeah. Did that doesn't that work? No. Um the first public hearing we have to have by January 13th. But further, we have to decide on its date because we have to, and we can do that by email if we have to do that by email, but we have to um, notice that by January 1st. The date of the public hearing. The date of the public oh, hearing that will happen by the 13th. The public hearing is January 8th. Yeah, I think. Sorry. Okay. Which is similar to what you are saying. We have to set the date before the first. Right. So do we need to, but do we need to, I mean, could we set the date now? Sure. Or we could wait. It doesn't matter. We know we're going to use that meeting on um, in the beginning of January. What's, so what is the um, latest date that we can have that hearing? The 13th. Of January. Yes. No, I don't. I, 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 because I, I, chances are it's going to be a pretty quick meeting. Well, right. There's not. I mean, if we have, if we meet on a regular schedule, we'll suss it out, meet on the second date to do the hearing. It should be a pretty quick yeah. ten minute and for thing. Me, like not all the board members are gonna to have to come because you don't need it you don't need a quorum, right? You don't need you to need vote on it. Oh you have to pick a date at this meeting because this is January January seventh is the first thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. So um oh gosh. My January is wide open. So isn't, it, isn't it safer to pick a date now as opposed to? Yes. By all means, we have to have a meeting before yes. January first. Yeah. So we have all the players in the room. Yes. And there's always the option of having a separate meeting as a, just as a workshop to consider it, right? Yes. You know, and, and then do the public hearing on the seventh so, when you're actually meeting. Yeah. But when do we have to decide that? To, to notice that. We have to uh, notice whatever we're doing. Days before, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Uh, so we need to notice it by the twenty eighth. And otherwise, if we if we met the seventh and had the public hearing, we could have how many days the next week? Can we do that or not? The public hearing after the meeting is that what you're saying? No, because that would be the fourteenth and it has to be by the thirteenth. And we just can't meet a day early. But well, I don't know. So it would be better to pick the date tonight so that we can make sure we meet our library. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yes. It makes sense to, that way we don't have to worry about missing that. Yes.
much as December is really cramped, it might be easier. Like, can, can we not have a meeting to decide about language and what we think about things the week of the 16th? 16th. 16th of uh, December. 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 I just want to revisit that idea because January is, there's not a lot of, you know, you've got a week of a holiday, you know. We never, the first Tuesday is the 7th, I mean, just our regular meetings only, you know, quarter into the month. Um, I can do the, I can do, yeah, which I can't even make, I can do the 19th, the Thursday. Thursday the 19th. I think I can. I, I didn't think to bring my. I, I don't know why I couldn't. Uh, I think still, but not really. I'm not sure, but I can verify it. I, I, it's I, I it's schedule it. Sure. Can yeah. it be yeah. earlier? It could be earlier. All right. So how about you? Yeah, I'll I'll say the 19th. I'll double check at home, but I'm quite sure it's the 19th is okay. Yeah. I mean, it will be like relatively. It should be relatively brief. There's no cases. It's just. So we're going to have Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. And then, Fantastic. And then, then we'll, we'll set the public hearing on the, the day of the meeting, the seventh. Yeah. Yeah. The seventh. Yeah. So that's set. So public hearing is. So the other things I just wanted to refresh. Wasn't there a discussion before the end about site plans expiring at some point? Site plans. We, yeah, we didn't. Um, site plans having an expiration date. Yes. Um, and don't I think we need to adopt? Do we have to adopt an a, a ordinance on that, or if we want to do that? I think. Um, isn't it? Is that in there? And if not, then there's, I know there's an RSA that addresses. If you're, we're saying that if you have an approved site plan, you do nothing. Then I'm pretty sure it's four, it expires in four years. And I think we wanted to move that up. I, 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 that I remember, I remember uh, seeing some municipal association email or something about that, and it's now six months ago. But I thought that was a. I can look through their their articles and stuff and see. But also, I think we need to be careful. I'm pretty sure we can't be more strict than the state, can we? I think that's true. I, I guess I thought that um, whatever it was, we had an opportunity to tighten it up. And I can't talk, say it with more specificity than that. But we'll look. We'll, we'll, we'll look. And I'm going to go back to one of my, my, my favorites is, is uh, impact, <laughs> impact fees. Fee. Now, we have an ordinance, you said? I think I heard you Well, say it's that. in the ordinance, yes, yes. that so, we can. Even so, we can. Yes. But we don't have it. So what will we need to do? It's up. It's up to the planning board to come up with the fees. But it's. I think what we need to determine is: is it going to be? Is there going to be sufficient development to justify it? Because it's a fairly complicated issue. I mean, we have to have separate accounts in banks, like one for schools, one for recreation, one for uh, police, one for fire. If it's not spent in like six years, I think, then it has to be refunded. So you have to keep track of that. We have to have it's like a process. Administration part piece yes, of it. Yes, that's a big piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my, my first question then is, so is that something that has to be voted on? Or, could, or like the pork chop lots, is that something we can just decide? Um, the, um, let me think. So it's in the zoning ordinance, but we don't need to change the zoning ordinance. Right. We just need, um, I think the fee schedule is in the subdivision, or, or should be in the subdivision rights. So again, for my, forgive me. We should probably check the, yeah. to see, yeah. Yeah. point taken, like I don't know if we can just adopt fee, a fee structure for something. There's, that some, there's certainly a procedure, because we, I mean, we have to justify it. You know, we have to say because of the level of development, um, we need this extra money in order to Increase the size of the school, or so for right, which means that you have to prove that your school yeah. is already at capacity and can't yeah. handle the development of two hundred extra homes. So, yeah. you know, we we have a lot of learning to do, or I have a lot of learning to do about how that would work. Because you know, for example, with the school, 
we would have to stay in touch with them annually to see how enrollment's going and how much more room they have. And um, it doesn't even tie into your, your public utilities as well as far as your fire and your everything. Police. You, you have to show how that's going to impact what your current status is as far as costs. Yes. And how we right. develop it. Right. Population, we have, right. population is going to affect that proportionately. Exactly. exactly. So that was the administrative piece. I mean, I, I, I agree. That's. It's, it's that would be tough. Tough. make a person very busy. Well, it's tough, and it would make us very busy. But at the the other side of that is, um, we have some huge swaths of land that are not protected. Right. And you know, one of them is 270 acres. And isn't that the issue that either we we, we plan for it ahead of time, or then it happens and, and we're, it's too late. Yes. It's too late. So right off from what we say in these meetings. You know, a lot of times how we find out about loopholes, I need no definitions, is because they come to light. Yeah. Like, there's no definition for pork chop lots. Who knew? No. Right. So, so um, we should look at that as uh, we, whether we have to, what, what, the, what the mechanisms are for putting a fee schedule in place. Yeah. Because the, whether we have the authority to put a fee yeah. structure in place. Um, and Tom, if you can see if um, what you can find in writing from another community about how you prove the impact and any other forms or regs about keeping track of it. Yeah, okay. Yep. Thank you. Because I'd like to get done talking about it and either decide that we're doing it. Well, or I, that it I, I agree. Make sense I agree. Because I, we keep bringing it up and we keep not really deciding that it's a good idea or not. We've also, so. in the past, said we really need them and then we get a five lot subdivision. You, you know, it's just, it seems to be happening more and more with what's happening. Kind of, well, it is developing around us, you know. When you look what's happening with the building right. and, you know, the gag and the little subdivision. Yeah, I mean, these are, these are happening. So, if somebody explain to me an impact fee, tell me what that is. It would be a separate fee over and above the permit. To whom? Who's, who's paying the fee? Oh, the developer. The developer. Okay. Which, of course, the cost will be passed on to the other consumer, which would be the whoever the home buyer is. But you establish, a, however we justify it, we establish a dollar amount for the school impact. And, and we don't have to do all of that. We can just say school and, and fire, for instance. But there's school, fire. Uh, public recreation and police. Is this only for subdevelopments or for individual housing? Oh, it'd be for individual houses. If you had a, if you had a lot somewhere like the, the gentleman here, yeah, yeah. if we had impact fees, then they would have to pay. They would have to pay it. Yeah. So, so, so it's not just for big developments. If no. you if okay. you if, if you oh, implement them, you implement them for everybody for all new. Okay, yeah. I didn't know there was a, like a guideline for that or just. We had to pay. We built a house in Dover. We had to pay. Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm a little bitter about it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Most people are, but it, it, I don't. At least we had somebody at school. <laughs> it's over, though. I, I have to. I mean, people complain all the time, but it doesn't stop the development. No, no. It's, it's, it's you know. I mean, if if we had it, if the town had it, you know, 270 acre parcel, someone would come in and complain about it, but. You know, they, they have to pay it before a certificate of occupancy is issued for any particular property. But that's going to be factored into the purchase price of the home. So, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a trickle-down thing. But in Dover, anyway, I can tell you, or Portsmouth, the market, it, it hasn't stopped development. Well, it, it's, and I'm not saying it, it, the purpose of this is to stop development so much as to not burden the town. Like for instance, I think that a lot of these bigger towns are... Well, they have more resources and they're ahead of, more ahead of the curve than we are. So, for instance, look, I'm looking at Dover's page. So, Dover, um, for a single residence, the impact fees are as follows 1326 recreation fees, 325 police, 615 fire, $6,629 wow. schools. Total impact fees are $8,895. If you, um, apartments, four plus units, um, it seems less, but mostly it's because it's per unit. 872-279-447-3303-4601, the same thing. So, um, but that, 
that's exactly what it goes to the impact. You know, a, a, an apartment would have less chance of having children than, say, a three-bedroom home. So that it's all consistent with that. But that that has to be all established. Right. What that yeah. What that determination. Is. But then you have to. But then you, you have to keep track of whether or not that. Um, impact was realized or not, because if the impact wasn't realized, then you have to return the funds right. after yeah. a certain period of time. That's after six years, yeah. That's pretty tricky all the way around. Oh, yeah. Who keeps track, of, who keeps track of those numbers? Exactly. I mean, is it at well, the department? In, yes. Mm -hmm. in, like, in a place where you have staff. The department says, yeah, there's... Is there somebody that does that? Just That's what they do all day long, I'm sure. Well, that's a lot of what they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It funds the positions that yeah. they <laughs> Yes. Well, and it's up to this board to decide what that impact fee will be? Once, oh, okay. based on a bunch of input, yes. Oh, yeah, well, have to oh, get I understand that too. Yeah, sure, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'll, I'll make sure, but, because um, as Caroline said, it's already in the ordinance, the zoning ordinance, that we can't do it. We can do it, but we just don't know what we're charging right now. Right. So we, we haven't set any fees. We're not charging anything because it's in the ordinance, but we haven't set any fees. Right. Right. Established any. Right. So it would be a really a, a punch in the gut if somebody, you know, all of a sudden we said, oh, we have in fact fees now. I mean, it would be a shock for a lot of, any, a lot of people probably. Well, there aren't any new construction applications. Let's say I had a new then. construction. I've been living here for a long time. I decided I'm going to add on. Well, no, it's only for new yeah, dwelling it's, units. It's, yeah, just it's, new it's stuff. not for oh, just new stuff. Yeah, it's not for putting a deck oh, on your. Okay. Yeah, it's right. for increasing living space because that's what increases the demand for services. And so the, the other side of the argument is, and I'm not saying that I've got the answers. The other side is, you don't have impact fees. Someone comes in and puts a 200 home development. Right. There's no impact fees, so you and I, as is currently existing homeowners, right. just pays that through an increase. The 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 increase in in, in in town services required by that, yes. we pay for that instead of the yeah. developer paying yeah, for it. I understand. The impact fees are kind of like the building permit fee, it's, it's a user fee. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever, yeah. Yeah. Whoever does it, then they, they have to like join our club. Yeah, right, pretty right. much. You know? But what we're missing the whole point of the benefit of them is that now that's money that can be used. Yes. For right. these fire trucks and these, right. uh, you know, they're always complaining about we have to buy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it all, you know, transparent and everything. It'll all have to be carefully calculated yes. and dispersed. I mean, and tracked. But I mean, I think we could be missing a huge boat there. You know. Well, because we've got these big parcels that, right. you know, one of them's up for sale, but any number of other ones could potentially at any time go up for sale. Hmm. Of course, the other thing could be. Um, do a proposed zoning, not that we want to, do a proposed zoning change to, like say, increase the acreage for a house in that particular zoning district before. Well, so that negates the, the benefit, if you believe it's a benefit of the cluster subdivision, which sets land aside. So, you know, y yeah. you, you keep open space as part of a subdivision. Everybody can benefit from the fact that that space stays open, yeah. but it allows for smaller lots. Yeah. So, presuming they come in for an open space subdivision, but if it's a conventional subdivision, um, we can't force a cluster subdivision. They can come in. No, I don't think we can. Nor do we. Nor can we require it. Right. So, see, uh, well, that's actually if it's in the ordinance, we can. I mean, we can, like um, other communities will have. If you have, uh, say, a ten-acre lot in an R forty zone. It has to be a cluster. If it's less than that, then you can do cluster or conventional. But it's almost always to the developer's benefit to do the cluster anyway because the infrastructure the infrastructure costs are reduced. You know, fewer roads and drainage. One house is per, yeah. Yeah, per infrastructure. But what Tom was, has brought up was something, you know, I was sort of thinking in the back of my mind, it, it just in the very initial stages is, you know, we have countryside residential, maybe we have scenic countryside um, uh, with much larger minimum lots. Yeah. And, and I'd frankly like to talk about that at the next meeting. Well, it's, it's all on which side of the fence you're on about, you know, um, we have a shortage of affordable housing in the region. 
which means that industry is having trouble finding employees because employees can't find affordable places to live. So that's kind of a not in my backyard approach. You know, land is finite, which means that land values are always going to go up. Um, if you make lots really large, then you minimize the overall development potential. Um, we can do that, but are we, you know, I, I guess there's no right or wrong answer to that. It's, it's all, I think, personal values and, and what kind of place we want to live in. You know, the cluster subdivision is nice because it maintains open land, but you're also getting a lot more density. But the density provides for more people to have housing. What, but we don't, I mean, I guess individually we don't have, have an obligation to care. But, you know, we are part of a region that is having problems with housing. So, you know, I'm not trying to push values one way or the other about it, but um, I, it's, an I, interesting, I, it's an interesting point. And I was just, and I, and I, and I think I prefaced by saying it's a very early thought. I mean, the other thing is that we don't have, we're not a town like uh, Newington that has giant uh, industry that can pay right, for... Right, subsidize everything. And, and yeah. uh, you know, um, and housing will always be a burden. What? But but this this town doesn't even doesn't seem to really want commercial or industrial either. It just sort of wants to maintain it maintain life the way it is. But but it's never going to stay the way it is because those property owners have the have the right to do what they will with those properties. So you know. It's an interesting conundrum. You can't really zone a district no longer developable. <laughs> you know, I didn't or suggest that. well, no, 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 no. I didn't mean to suggest that you were, but you know, I think you know. Every, I guess, what I'm trying to say is, you know, there's every everybody in town. I think would have a different approach, and and you know, is somewhere else on the spectrum about um, the answer to this, because it's it's a it's a conundrum, because there's no easy. Or a correct answer. Well, the town could buy that parcel. Hmm? The town could buy that parcel and it's dedicated as a park. Well, right, but the question is, so you know, the people do they want to, you know, do they want to put their money where their values are? That's really what it comes down to. We yeah. want it to stay the way it is, but it, but do you want it to stay the way it is enough that you're willing to pay for to buy right. those people out? Exactly. Right. And, and the answer to that is likely no. Right. So then what? And if we had impact fees, could that help fund that or not? Um, it would help fund the impact force, you know, schools, fire, police. But open space, does it help fund open space? I think it's... If, if, oh, if, oh, if, oh, oh, no, no, no. I can think, yeah. I don't okay, know. No, it's, 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 right, it's, it's for those specific yeah. uses. I mean, in, in Dover we have... We, we started doing um, transfer development rights so that people could buy the development right of a lot, mm -hmm. leave that lot vacant, and increase the parcel in their in their subdivision. But and, and that money can go into the conservation district for, for the pur purpose of uh, purchasing land that we you know dedicate for conservation. So in theory, it's a great idea, but it's. Uh, it needs some revision. So that's sort of like a carbon credit kind of deal you're saying where you could, yeah. The, yeah. like for instance, the the uh, condos that are kind of tightly packed together beyond uh, um, the Toyota dealership. Is that, yes. is that part of that? Yes. Where you, where yes. they tra it, was, it got very incredible yes. density and they got that by keeping uh, open space right. someplace else? Right. Right. They pay, they pay the money. They pay, you know, X number of dollars per unit. And then that money goes into an account that then can purchase land, you know, for, for the city to, to own and dedicate it just as recreation or open space or conservation land or whatever. It, it works. And that's done via an ordinance? Yes, yeah. And what's that ordinance called? Um, well, it's in the zoning ordinance. It's transfer development rights. I have to write that down. Transfer yeah. development rights. Yeah. TDR is what it's the short term, but it's transfer development rights. But that's another thing we had to go through with this whole process and procedure of establishing, you know, what what the dollar amount is going to be. Um, it was quite a project. I have to ask, um, say where, you know, we are on 
uh, Pinecrest Lane, but I know that the property behind us is protected land. How did it become protected land? That's a great question. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, but at the same time, our street is um, urban residential. I find it kind of contradictory, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, to be on that urban residential with protected land there. <laughs> well, because the zone for, for Pinecrest and Cowan, it's a teeny little zone of urban residential that abuts commercial. That protected land is actually in a commercial zone. It could be wetlands, it could be... And it is pretty wet. Yeah. Which is the and that's often why land is protected because somebody went in and looked at developing it or thought about it and then said, oh, it's wet. And then. Or they did the development and then they donated their. put the land in conservation to protect it. Yeah. Because they can't use it in the <laughs> That was not so. That's how it's going to knock on the open space. That's, that's yeah. kind of cynical yeah. explanation of it, but mm -hmm. that's how it happens. Yeah. Right. I want to hear a lot of things that you want, and thank everyone for the patience tonight. I just, I think that uh, unfortunately, um, if we don't think about things, then things are just going to happen. And maybe it's okay for things to just happen. But. You're right. But so one more point about the five acres. Personally, I love the five acre. You know, like, I think I think it's more aligned with what people want, which is more open space. Um, I think people tend to not like the cluster subdivision, even though it allows for open space. But I don't know, because I'm just one person. Um, and so that reminded me about the master plan. And um, I would be hesitant to suggest that we do any kind of revision to zoning that um, really changes its use or its potential for development without um, revisiting or readopting revising that um, section of the master plan. Uh, the master plan is entirely out of date, but, um, but whatever we do for zoning ordinance revisions really ought to reflect what's in the master plan. Because the master plan is supposed to reflect what the people in the community want us want Rollinsford to be. And how is that a legal requirement? We are re legally required to have a master plan right. and keep it up to date. Um, it has some minimum number of chapters, and then it has optional chapters. But what I'm saying is that we don't have to only enact zoning ordinances or those changes that are uh, consistent with the master plan. Um, I, I don't know that it would be illegal to do so, but I'm wondering why you would. I mean, you know, it, like th they're supposed to be congruent. The master plan, you know, I, I think that's the intention of the master plan, and why we're, you know, required to have one is because all the bodies in town are supposed to consult it to be sure. It's kind of like a check and balance to make sure that all the bodies, all the, all the boards and committees are respecting the view of the residents. Because yeah, that's the document that says this is what the residents right, want. It's a guidance document, essentially, that says sure. how, how the town wants to go. And then the, uh, the ordinances are revised accordingly. And, 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 and I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't update the master plan. What I'm reacting to is what I get is the idea of what's, for lack of a better phrase, kick the can down the road. Right. I, I don't want to kick the can down the road because, I mean, uh, we've already got to, we're not going to squeeze in changes to the master plan between now and sure. January 7th or whatever. Um, oh, and right. So the other thing is you can propose a change and we can consider it and we can consider whether or not that change varies greatly yeah. from the existing master plan. Which Where is, is that the master plan, by the way? Is it on the website? Is no, it it's not. It is a, it is a, we have one single paper copy, and I keep meaning to try to scan the master plan. I apologize. What would happen if it got, if I got yeah. thrown away by accident? I guess it would be in big trouble. Huh? Yes. I have some chapters. <laughs> she, she, yeah. Isn't it an ongoing kind of thing? I have I mean, recreation. The plan is always being updated, isn't it? I mean, well, I mean, usually it's updated on schedule. Like, certain chapters get updated, and then X years later, X chapters. I mean, you, it, this, but it's, it's ongoing. Usually, yeah. Well, it can be ongoing. That's the more financially um, level way to do it. But you can also like do it once and then leave it alone and then do it entirely again. Um, it's just more um, manageable 
if you break it up and keep at it. Well, instead of starting from scratch. Certainly. Well, starting from scratch, right, but I'll, yeah. Um, but also, you, you can, I think if you have, you know, a certain number of chapters and every year you're revisiting one of those chapters, then it's always relatively up to date, but also the board and the community are used to the process. Oh, it's that time of year again, we have to go talk about how we feel about, you know, this other chapter of the master plan, and, and everybody's kind of used to the routine of it, I think, which has value. How big is this document, the master plan? Mm. Um, it's in a two-inch binder. It's not that big. It's not that big. <laughs> so, are we talking 50 pages, 25 pages? Oh, no, it's probably like 100 pages, maybe? Uh, it's bigger than the zoning ordinance, which yeah. is 100 pages, but it's not very much bigger. Yeah. So, maybe 120 pages. <laughs> but it's, Can we scan it in? And yeah, I, I, it? I made myself a big note. I'm gonna, <laughs> I, will, I will get it scanned and sent to you all. If I may, one last comment on impact fees. If you look in section 13.2 of the zoning ordinance, if that's eight pages of just impact fee stuff. It talks about the methodology and, and all that. So, so it would give us more of an idea of, of the work required to do it, and then what we would have to do to maintain it. Well, um, and is it still legal? What? Is it still legal, whatever's in the zoning ordinance? Is there anything that, like, does it require updating, or is there anything about the language as it exists that should be revised? I guess we would have to review it to see that. Well, right. I'm just putting that out there that I wouldn't want to just blanketly accept that whatever we have is good it's, to go. Because it's old and never been implemented. But how old could it be? The state just adopted them. I mean, allowed for the adoption of them. Well, maybe longer than I think. Well, okay, so for the five years that I've been here, they've been in the ordinance and yeah. we haven't done anything with them. So, you know, I, I don't know anything about the state law, but... Um, and they may be fine. I don't mean to say that they're not. Right, right. Well, give us an idea anyway. For sure. All right. For sure. Thank well, you, great. Well, thank everyone for coming tonight. And uh, thank you for sacrificing your Emmy again uh, <laughs> in December. In December uh, 19th. So, uh, a motion to address one. Make that. Can Second? I just give one little comment? Sure. Uh, the, the school budget public hearing is the 7th. Oh. Where the budget committee holds for the town, the school budget hearing. Okay, so we're still within the 13th. Thanks. If we <laughs> thank you, Nancy. Um, so, because um, school Tuesday decided to late. change it. So um, the ninth. What about the uh, Thursday? Can we get it? So we're th talking about the seventh, right? The ninth. What would be the ninth for both our public hearing and our yes. regular planning board meeting? Yes. Is that okay with people? Yeah. That works for me. What are we talking? The ninth yeah. of January. Um, January. So the sixteenth of December and the ninth of January. No. Nope. The nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yeah. Sorry. The nineteenth yeah. of December and the ninth of January. You probably said exactly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah, could you send an email out to the whole planning board so the alternates or whoever wasn't here tonight and yes. all of us can be reminded of those dates? Okay. Wonderful. Was okay. Okay. Ninth, Thursday time. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, folks. All right, we adjourn. Any second? Thank all in favor say aye. Aye. All right.